Let's see. We are continuing reading Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhaniti, verse 27. Yeah. May Sri Radhika who is a Chintamani gem for the surrendered souls, the crown jewel of girls in Raj, the jewel of Maharaj Rishabhanu's dynasty, <laughs> The jewel who pacifies Sham's desires and the jewel who adorns the cottage in the play bower be the real jewel in the jewel box of our hearts. Mm. May Sri Radhika, who is a Chintamani gem for the surrendered souls, the crown jewel of the girls in Braj, <clears throat> the jewel of Maharaj Rishabhanu's dynasty, the jewel who pacifies Sham's desires, and the jewel who adorns the cottage in the play bower, be the real jewel in the jewel box of our hearts. Mm -hmm. wow. Six jewels. <laughs> So she, she is the jewel of Vrindavan and also the jewel of the surrendered souls. Mm, for the surrendered souls. For the jewel, for the surrendered souls. Then she is also the jewel for her maidservants, and that should be our real jewel <laughs> within the jewel box of our heart. That is such a nice prayer and such a nice meditation. What we can meditate upon to make Srimati Radhika our real jewel in life means our most precious thing in our life, our ultimate goal to the to become a surrendered soul so that we can even begin to perform our devotional service as a manjari, then she becomes our everything, because the manjaris are one-pointed in serving Srimati Radhika's lotus feet. One-pointedness means that we don't have any other desire than that. 
And that is such a beautiful thing, such a beautiful meditation where we can bring our mind to meditate upon that and to make it our real heartfelt desire that this Srimati Radhika becomes our everything in our life, our most precious thing, our jewel that we should keep within the jewel box of our heart so that she will never leave us again and we will never leave her because if we can begin to have a relationship that will be our deepest and heartfelt relationship that we never will be able to leave again in our life. Well, this is such a nice, nice prayer and meditation to bring our mind in to this. Just as the Chintamani jewel fulfills all desires, Sri Radhika is the Prem Chintamani fulfilling the single desire for the treasure of Prema in the surrendered souls. Mahaprabhu, who had accepted Sri Radha's sweet Chintamani mood, said, Even if you don't offer your obeisances unto me, but blasphemy me instead, I will still make you offer obeisances and I will give you the treasure of Prema. All the people will perish <clears throat> if they don't honor me. Thinking like this, the Lord's heart melted with compassion, and he took sannyas. They will offer obeisances unto me, thinking me to be a mere sannyasi. Still, that will destroy their misery and save them. Sri Radha is a storehouse of compassion for the surrendered souls. Here, the very, it's very interesting 
it's very interesting that now already for the third time Shripat is mentioning for the surrendered souls. So Srimati Radharani is a storehouse of compassion for the surrendered souls. Means that there is unlimited compassion to those who can give themselves to Srimati Radhika and can surrender to the idea or to the concept that we want to become a Radha Dasi and want to be surrendered. Only if we are surrendered, we can render service. Otherwise, it is not possible because in the material world, everyone wants to be served. Everyone wants to be the one who is being adored and worshipped and praised because of our tendency to be the enjoyer. So we always have to check our attitudes and the way how we are behaving and how we are uh, performing our devotional service. It is real devotion that we are putting in our activities or are we doing what we are doing because uh, we want to be liked by others who see how nice we are doing things. So it is very, I think here, I can feel here it's very important that uh, Sripad wants to make it to us very clear, this point, the importance of a surrendered soul or what a surrendered soul has to be. And that is a uh, part of the process of our bhakti path. Because unless we are not surrendered, uh, our Gurudev can also not navigate us because we are in the conception of being the doer. So only if we can surrender ourselves, we can let us navigate. So then Gurudev can bring us towards the goal. Unless we are not surrendered, means we are blocking this from happening. As Srimati Radharani is a storehouse of unlimited compassion, so Gurudev is also a storehouse of unlimited mercy. He loves everyone and he wants us to make progress in spiritual life. This is what he is doing. His seva is to navigate, to guide the disciple towards the goal. But if we are blocking ourselves from that, then how he will navigate us? Radhe. Chintamani also indicates the remembrance practiced by the devotees. She is like a jewel, Mani, playing within the thoughts, Chinta of the surrendered souls. Mm -hmm. When that remembrance 
becomes intense, then that chintamani will be visible inside out. Hmm. This is long chinning. Rati. She says, uh, again, here is mentioned uh, playing within the thoughts of the surrendered soul. So then she will manifest within our thoughts. And then this is manifesting from inside out means that our behavior automatically will change on the external because on the internal we are absorbed within the Leela. So when Radharani is manifesting within our thoughts means that this Leela and our role within that Leela as a maidservant slowly becomes manifested. And again, Sripad is mentioning that this is happening to the surrendered souls. What do you think about this? It is, this is what I can feel from this. That we should uh, try to get into this feeling, get into this flow, as Gurudev very nicely, many times now he says, that it's like you put a piece of wood into the river and then the wood without any endeavor it's flowing so we have to uh, catch upon to be uh, to get in this flow and then we the only thing that we have to do is to practice and try to be in the flow and everything will become very clear and then we will be able to get the feeling and to taste the rasa of this beautiful spiritual realm 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 what do you think siddhanta Yeah, I was um, <clears throat> I was referencing the Chaitanya Charitamrita when I saw this verse of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu trying to understand this and get some context. So I was a little bit diverting my attention to that, uh, but I was listening, and <clears throat> I mean, basically, the fundamental basis of everything is a surrender, as you mentioned. And that's why this commentary is starting with this. Surrendering to Mahaprabhu, without this, we we can't progress. We can't find this, this jewel. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving us this jewel. So, again, I'm here in Mayapur, you know, I'm a little bit... <laughs> uh, how should I say in that mood? But uh, you're in Vrindavan. I try to also imbibe 
what is coming from our Guru Dave and sweet devotees there. So it's not so easy for me sometimes. I'm doing a little ping pong playing here. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this uh, Chintamani, you know, a jewel, we want to hide it. We want to keep it safe. Yeah. So we keep it, we say, the storehouse of our heart. We're kind of locking it up in a box and keeping it safe. And this is this is a beautiful thing, you know. But then he's also talking about this in the holy name on our tongues, right? In our throats and our tongues. I don't know if you got to that point yet. I was reading ahead a little bit. So this is manifest. It's manifest in different ways. It's important to understand that this is a process. Yeah, yeah, we get this jewel, but we have to cultivate this appreciation of this jewel. And I'm just repeating what you said. It's a question of surrender. The more we surrender, the more we give up our material attachments and surrender to the lotus feet of Radharani as a servant, as a true Radhadasi, not just calling ourselves Radhadasi, but living it, experiencing it, feeling it as much as possible, then the, the jewel will start to shine and will start to, we will appreciate it more. And that that is so important to have that mood of appreciation of the greatest thing we say we use this jewel because the jewel everyone is wants to have something of value <laughs> this is a valuable thing yeah so anyway i don't want to keep <clears throat> blabbing away i'll let you continue here so thank you so much though for asking me to share thank you I love the quote. Mahaprabhu, who had accepted Sri Radha's sweet Chintamani mood, said, Even if you don't offer obeisances unto me, but blasphemy me instead, I will still make you offer obeisances and I will give you the treasure of Prema. This treasure of Prema comes from this Chintamani mood. This Chintamani mood is defined as our the jewel of our thoughts so where we put our mind so if we have our mind if our thoughts are in this mood then we open ourselves to the treasure of prema Further down, it says, when remembrance becomes intense, then the Chintamani will be visible inside out. So we want to always remember and this is the beauty, this is the jewel of these books that we read. is that we get so many different jewels, so many different ways to remember, to live in this sweet mood of our Swamini. We can do it by actually remembering her pastimes and 
discussing it with our brothers and sisters. We can also do it by accepting her qualities and living full of compassion, full of motherly love for any and every soul we interact with. And all of these help our, our remembrance become more intense. The holy name is also Chintamani and is appearing on the devotee's tongue. Srimad Jiva Goswami writes, the deity form of the Lord appears before the eyes And the name form appears on the tongue and from the throat. In this way, the devotees can feel this Chintamani gem in all of their senses and become blessed. So again, we have more, an example of more ways to facilitate our thoughts being constantly in our Swamini. The mercy of the deity form appearing in front of us. The holy name that we chant and sing. Rashad, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really overstate the importance of that one here. Here, here. All of these gems are ways for our senses to become single-pointed, overwhelmed with, constantly focused in our beloved Swamini. And when the mercy comes that we can incorporate all of these gems in whatever fashion works for us, we can become blessed with constant remembrance. Sri Radhika is the crown jewel of millions of sweet Raja Gopis of Sri Vrindavan that are all endowed with Mahabhav. Okay. And all the Gopis, even Chandravali, are simply her expansions. Mm -hmm.
this is very uh, interesting that it is mentioned the millions of Raja Gopi, Srimati Radharani, she's the crown jewel of all of them. And there are millions of Raja Gopis. And there are also millions of Manjaris. So, as we are also many here, we should not think that we should do this alone or this path is in a uh, it's something that we have to do alone we have to do it together in terms of helping each other like here in these sharings we are trying to help each other and to get some inspiration from the realizations of all of us and as we are helping each other here with our sevas and everything that we are doing so it is also in the spiritual world there we have our guru manjari who is giving us the seva that we have to perform or which is corresponding to our individual nature, talent, qualities that we have in our Siddha Deha, in our spiritual body. Everyone has an individual relationship and individual talents. And the Manjaris there, they are also helping each other. And there are innumerable Manjaris as they are millions of gopis who actually are all the expansions of Srimati Radhika, which she is the crown jewel of all of them. So Srimati Radhika is always in the center here. She is our ultimate goal of worship, of loving exchange. Just as there is no difference between musk and its fragrance and fire and its heat, there is also <clears throat> no difference between God, Krishna, and his energy, Radha. But still, in the kingdom of Leela, Radha and Krishna have separated for the sake of playing sweet pastimes with each other and with their devotees. So the devotees included here, they like us to have us with them. So Srimati Radhika likes to have us near to her. She likes us to be included in their transcendental pastimes because if we all are included we are augmenting their enjoyment in their loving affairs because the manjaris are very expertly assisting 
Srimati Radhika decorating her very nicely, bathing her very nicely, putting uh, a, a two lakh and painting her and doing all the different kinds of seva to make her so beautiful for her shyama. So, therefore, the devotee is included here very much, as Gurudev also like us to have very near, to have a direct association, to have a relationship. Someone has to be near. There is a saying, near is dear. So, we become dear to each other if we have some, if some closeness can be there, then a real relationship can start. Yeah, I have just one, one what came to my mind only, um, that we can see that love is not a material thing because there are already millions of manjaris and Radharani would like to have more manjaris. So we can see that if you share love, it becomes more. This is this is very special. It shows us, yeah. And this is also here. If we share love and if we, if we share our experiences, then it's also increasing and this we can experience here already. And we will experience it there even more. Jai Ho. For this reason, Krishna has made Radha the queen of Vrindavan. Jai. This is confirmed in the Puranas. Vrindavan Adi Patyam Cha Datyam Tasya Pratusyata. Sri Radha is the jewel that brightens Sri Shabanu Maharaja's dynasty. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami wrote in his Radhika Astakam She is the blessed desire vine of Maharaj Rishabhanu, the best man of Raj. She greatly increased the prestige of Maharaj Rishabhanu's dynasty by taking birth, by taking her birth in it. Sri Vishwanantha Chakravarti comments as follows on the verse from the Bhagavad. When Maharaj Parikshit heard from Sukamuni 
about his dynasty, the Puru dynasty. He understood that the Lord had not descended in it. So he was very disappointed. Sukamuni could understand what was on the emperor's mind and console him by saying, O king, God may not have descended into your family personally, but Prema has certainly descended in it. And I cannot praise the dynasty in which Prema has descended enough. So, so much blessed is that dynasty from King Vrishabhanu because Radharani appeared in it, uh, like it is said here, Prema appeared because Radharani is the uh, personified, love personified. So, Srimati Radharani, she is the queen of Vrindavan. And Krishna is considered to be a local prince. So he says here that the best man in Vrindavan is King Vrishabhanu, and it is not Krishna, because Krishna is a local prince. But it is our original Krishna, Rajendranandan Krishna, is the original Krishna who never leaves Vrindavan. So all the other Krishnas are his Vasudev expansions and everything what is outside of Vrindavan is the Vaikuntha manifestation of Krishna. So even if we go to Mathura or Dvaraka, the Krishnas there are not the same as the Krishna from Vrindavan. But here it is Srimati Radhika, who is the queen of Vrindavan, and therefore it is uh, very important that we understand the value of this Vrindavan Dham and come and take shelter of the Dham so that we can have a direct association with the Dham, because this Vraja Bhumi, this land of Vraja, it is a Siddha Bhumi. It is a part of the spiritual world within this material world, who actually has nothing to do with the material world, because it's completely spiritual. But to see that, we should come on the Siddha platform, on the soul platform of the realization of this. And for that, these uh, wonderful literatures like this Radharasa Sudhanidhi, who is giving us uh, the picture of the real Vrindavan is very important to meditate upon this when we are practicing our bhajan so that we can get into the real Vrindavan. From this, 
follows that the dynasty of Maharaj Rishabhanu is even more brilliant than the dynasty of Nanda Maharaj. Because Mahabhav herself has descended in it. Maharaj Nanda's name and his family are certainly successful. Because Nanda Yati Jagad Iti. He who gives joy to the world is named Nanda. Nanda Maharaj caught the Krishna bird in the net of his own love. and made the whole world most happy by making him visible to their eyes. But a life without love does not attract Krishna, who is transcendental bliss personified. Therefore, Maharaj Rishabhanu gave him Prema Lakshmi Srimati Radharani, the goddess of love. His name, Rishabhanu, has thus become a success. Risha means the astrological sign of Taurus, April, May, a very hot time of year in Raj. And Panu means the sun. Maharaj Rishabhanu illuminates the cave-like hearts of all the people of the world with the sun rays of his love. Who has a more glorious name and dynasty than him? Srimati Radharani is the jewel of that dynasty. She is Sham Kama Bara Santi Mata. Santi Mami. The jewel that instantly pacifies Shama Sundra's intensely burning lust. that leaves a poisonous, scorching effect in his heart. In Sri Jayadev's Vasanta Rasa, it was shown 
that apart from Sri Radha, none of the Gopa Sundaris were able to extinguish the poisonous fire of Rasika Shiromani's Krishna's lusty desires. Billions of gopis could not extinguish the fire of his lust. From this, I can understand Sri Radhika's glories. On Srimati Radhika's mere sight or touch, this vast fire of lust is extinguished. Sham Kamavada means Shamasundra's greatest desire. <laughs> this is not the desire of this material world. Which is base. And is simply centered. Around personal. Sense gratification. Sri Radhika is the Nikunja Bhusamani, the jewel of the Bowers. The Bower houses of Vrindavan are the holiest places in existence. But when Sri Radha doesn't appear in them, they will die of misery. Our hero, Krishna, will have an empty heart when he sees the empty bowers without Radha. And when he becomes agitated by feelings of separation from her, All the moving and non-moving beings of Vrindavan begin to weep along with him. The darkness in Sham's desperate heart will then also fill the bower houses that thus lose all their beauty. As soon as Sri Radha appears in the bower house, 
She illuminates the cave-like hearts of Sham and all the other moving and non-moving beings that are present there. Shripad knows all these confidential pastimes and therefore he calls Sri Radhika Nikunja Bhusamani the jewel decorating the powers So Sripad knows all of these transcendental pastimes because actually he is living there uh, as a manjari and viewing all these things. Therefore, he knows exactly what this is all about. And uh, this was mentioned that the spiritual world and the material world are two completely different places. Therefore, Sripad mentioned also that uh, the loss of the spiritual world is a transcendental loss. It has nothing to do with the loss that we are experiencing here within the material world which is only meant for our own personal sense gratification. This is something completely different, because in the spiritual world, everything is about love, and everything and everyone is full of consciousness, like the moving and the non-moving beings. They are fully aware and full of consciousness. It's not like here that the different bodies are uh, in different degrees of coverings. Like, for example, within an animal body, we can understand about love, the feeling, but we cannot uh, understand about spiritual reality because that kind of body, there, the soul therein, it is very limited. And also the trees and the plants, they are covered with these material bodies. But in the spiritual world, everything and everyone, even the grass root, everything is full of consciousness and full of bliss. So I think it's uh, interesting uh, while Sripad is mentioning this so that we are not taking uh, these Leelas as something ordinary like it is happening in the material world so that we can go more deep and we can have a appreciation for the love and the loving exchange and understand that this is all about love and not about material sense gratification that we can make this distinction between the material world and the spiritual world You think, Martha? You go.
finally, he says, Sri Radha shines like a genuine gem in the jewel box of our hearts. Mm. Just as nobody cares for a box without jewels, similarly, a heart without the jewel-like Radhika is empty. A great devotee of Radha can get that Radha jewel in the box of his heart simply by constantly remembering her. That is, this is the meaning of meditation, constantly remembering her so that nothing else is coming to our mind and we keep our mind within this meditation. So, Sripad mentions simply by meditating upon her and as Gurudev also in the last few days uh, mentioned this again, he said, it's very simple. It's, uh, uh, we are those who make the things complicated, but actually it's a very simple thing. If we can surrender. If not, it will be complicated. I feel too that we can expand this remembrance past our meditations and incorporate it into our everyday life. Every moment we have an opportunity at this constant remembrance. And this can come in the form of remembering her mood, remembering Radharani's loving qualities. And we see this in our Gurudev love and action every moment of the day. Mm. We were discussing earlier, many pages ago, a phrase that is actually found in many different traditions. What would, what would love do? What would the manjari do? Um, we've heard it in kind of the Western world is what would Jesus do? It's like, what would love do? Every moment we get this opportunity to act in this way, every interaction we have, anything that happens in our mind, we can invite this thought into our mind and act in a way that invites more love into it. And in this way, we're automatically remembering her more by remembering her qualities. She's non-different than her qualities. So by remembering her qualities, by incorporating her compassion into our life, by giving ourselves the opportunity to live in a more loving mood, then we are coming closer to her and are getting closer to this constant remembrance. And this is easiest in association of those that are practicing it. And this yeah. is the beauty of the beautiful Sangha that we all get together here in the mornings and everyone getting together in their far corners of the world um, is that we can surround ourselves with others that also have this mood. And when we're surrounded by others that also have this mood, that are also in this practice of engaging in constant remembrance and living in these loving feelings, 
then it's easier for us to also do the same. Jai Ho. This is very much true. So Sangha is uh, the most important item in uh, practicing our bhajan to come together and exchange our realizations. Uh, there is also a saying, uh, you become like those who you are with. So there is some truth in it, because uh, also in the material world, the like-minded like to be together, like the worker, like to be with, with his worker friends and the banker, he like to be with his uh, banker friends. And if the banker want to be with the worker, then maybe they don't know what to uh what they should do and what they should talk about because they are not in the same mood or not on the same uh energy so we come together with like-minded same-minded devotees and inspire so that we can have an inspiration in uh, remaining to remain within this jewel-like process. Without her, the hearts of these devotees are filled with darkness. Therefore, Sripad submits to Srimati's lotus feet May the glistening Radha jewel always illuminate the jewel boxes of our hearts. I love that the word our hearts is used hmm. for our, it really indicates to me just how much mercy is always flowing for this attainment of prema in all directions. Um, Prabhupada is praying for every heart, every heart out there. And we see the same thing with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the beginning of this um, commentary where he's almost using Radharani's cleverness from the verse before to figure out a way to trick people to give him obeisances because he knows that if they offer obeisances to him, then they will attain prema. And so there's so much um, desire from those that have this this jewel this treasure of prema to want to give it to want to share it that it can inspire a lot of um hope mm -hmm. for a fallen soul like me that is like what chance do i stand of 
attaining any of this, but we can see those that have it are so inspired, are so motivated to to share it that maybe there is a maybe there is a chance. And I I also get from this what you said that it it can take away our fears, our shyness, because they they have so much compassion because they also they know our situation, mm -hmm. our state of mind. They they experienced it themselves, the sadhus. Mm -hmm. And therefore they are open to, to help us. And yeah, as you said, they are sharing it for us to, to also join them. And it's not a, we don't have to be afraid of any judgmental uh, if, uh, yeah, moods of them or something. Mm -hmm. like, it's just, they want to bring us there. Very, very nice point, thank you. Point it out. Yes, very nice. This is because of the unconditional love these great souls have. So what they are doing, they are not doing it for themselves. They are doing it for all the souls they came, they came, they come in contact with. So unconditional love means I give my everything without expecting anything. This is unconditional love. This is how our relationships should be. Otherwise, if I'm giving something or I give my love and I expect something back, then it's like a business relationship. But this is not what we want to be in a business relationship. We want to be in a loving relationship. So we can learn very much from all these sadhus, from our Gurudev, how he is behaving with everyone and so much love and so much caring. So that we one day maybe also will be able to do so, to become a loving Actually, this is for me, all this now here, it is very inspiring to really go deep into the subject and check out my own heart, how much real love is there or how much love is really there and what is my or what are my real heartfelt desires so that I can proceed on this bhakti path and inspire also other devotees to remain in the process and not to give up. For doing so, I think we should not be uh, result-orientated orientated hmm. or not result orientated because sometimes we practice and practice and practice and nothing is happening we feel like that what am i what am i doing here why nothing is happening why i can't feel anything why i'm struggling but then maybe we have to become 
more serious in what we are doing or we have to look inside deeply or more deep and check out uh, what are the blockages what are the things that have to be worked out and this is the beauty of this bhakti path and i think uh, one of the main points here in this verse is uh, to take shelter at the lotus feet of the word the surrendered soul or this is accessible to the surrendered souls to the surrendered devotee i think this is one of the main points here what we can learn of this that we should be or we should become surrendered or at least try And how can we practice this surrendered state in our everyday life through constant remembrance, through incorporating, sharing about these pastimes, all the different jewels that we've talked about in this class today. By doing this, we're automatically surrendering our false egos, our personal desires, and coming closer to our Swamini. Oh, delightful goddess of love, O oh, Chintamani Jewel for the Surrendered Souls. O oh, Enjoyer of Raj, Housewife of the Mountain Caves. O oh, Crown Jewel of Raj's Lady loves. O oh, jewel of the dynasty of King Vrishabhanu, the peaceful and well behaved friend of Maharaj Nanda. O oh, beloved of Sham, O oh, golden locket around Sham's neck, O oh, jewel that pacifies Sham's lusty desires. O oh, enjoyer in the bowers, O oh, Radharani, queen of the groves, O oh, jewel 
that decorates the private bowers Saraswati says, you are my goddess, and the great jewel in the box of my heart. Thus ends verse 27. So we can think about, we can take these jewels into our day and feel where we can incorporate them in one way or another. We can bring us closer to this treasure of frame. Jai 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 Jai